Have you stopped attending church because you've been hurt by a so-called Christian? Are you tired of the hypocrisy, the gossip, and the slander? Are you ready to hear and are looking for the good news of God's kingdom? Jesus said you would know his disciples by the love that they show one to another. We're New Covenant Bible Church, and I guarantee we're different than any church you've ever experienced. I'm Pastor James Lacey, and I'd like to personally invite you to worship with us for the next 30 minutes. Ask me that this week. What do you think's coming? What's going to happen next? I got to looking through God's Word to find out what's coming. I found some things. If you would, turn with us to Revelation chapter 21. Say, ooh, Revelation. Revelation 21 and verse 1. John said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That second verse, John said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. Can you imagine what that would look like? We say, well, what's coming? Are the terrorists coming? Is bankruptcy for the country coming is a non-stop fight between the Democrats and the Republicans coming I want you to know there's a new heaven and a new earth coming praise God as God's people there's a lot of things coming some of them are very positive and excited some things that we're going to face as God's people are very negative I like to focus on the positive but we've got to be realist and realize that there's negative things that if Jesus tarries God's people are going to face so we're going to look at God's Word this morning at five things that are coming for God's people. Number one, the first thing that's coming for God's people is trouble. The Word of God declares in Psalms 34, 19, in the first part of it, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Let me ask you this, as God's people, have you ever faced trouble? You're going through trouble now. If you haven't faced it, you're not going through it, it's coming tomorrow. We have a common enemy. That enemy's name is Satan. And the Word of God declares that his goal in life, all he wants to concentrate his efforts toward, is killing us, stealing from us, and destroying us. When we make a commitment to Christ, when we start singing, I'm washed in the blood, and we really mean it from the inside out, trouble is on the way. I believe that Satan takes our picture, Brother Carney, and hangs it up in the post office in hell. We are of the ten most wanted people when we align ourselves with Christ and we get washed in the blood. Child of God I want you to know beyond the shadow of a doubt and listen to me clearly as I speak to you this morning if you're sold out, if you are living for God, if you are following His statutes and commandments this world that we live in is going to bring trouble your way. Trouble is coming for God's people. You say how is it coming? It's coming through Satan. He's going to do all all that he can do to hurt you, to harm you, to destroy you. It's going to come in relationships. It's going to come in finances. It's going to come in the battlefield of our mind. As God's people, we have to know that it's not all pie in the sky, by and by. It's going to be super when we get there. But walking through this life, if we are truly living for God, trouble is going to come. Amen. Well, 
What other ways does it come? It comes through people. Most of the time, trouble comes through people. Sometimes through those closest to us. How does trouble come? Satan will allow people to enter your life that will test your Christianity. You'll find out how saved you are by looking at how you handle the relationships in your life. Many times through those closest to you. Trouble comes many times from those within our very family. They make us want to scream. They make us want to give up. They make us want to lay down and forget about it. There are people who won't step foot in church because of the way they've been treated by their blood family. That's trouble. Sometimes our own children. Anybody here besides me have children that do all they can to test your patience and drive you nuts and bring trouble into your life? We have a DVD player in our van, and Daisy was screaming and crying. She was wanting to watch the, what's it called? The teen, the teen beach movie. Oh, it's, a, it's about a 1950s, uh, you know, a, a biker gang and, and uh, surfers, and she loves that show. Noah loves that show. I was trying to get that DVD into the DVD player in the van, and it wouldn't go in, and I was about to lose it. Finally... From the seat behind mine, Noah said, maybe there's a penny in it. I said, okay. I went in the garage and got some zip ties and a pair of tweezers, and I fished around in there, Rick, and, and sure enough, I got a penny to flip out of that DVD player. I started to put the DVD in. It would not accept the DVD. It kept kicking it out. Noah spoke up and said, maybe there's a lot of pennies in it. <laughs> if we allow the people around us to knock us off kilter in what we're doing for God, it's trouble. It's a problem. What we've got to do is get our focus so in tune on Jesus. Get our eyes so focused on Him that no matter who comes against us or what comes against us, we don't worry about it because we know what the end looks like. We've said it for years. I've read the back of the book. We win this thing. We don't have anything to worry about. So no matter what you're going through today, no matter what comes tomorrow, you can stand assured that God God has a plan for your life and he'll bring it to pass no matter what the trouble looks like. No matter how your husband is behaving. No matter how your wife acts. No matter how your children treat you. No matter how the neighbors behave. No matter what's going on in your world, if you are firmly rooted in the word of God, when trouble comes, it won't cause you to be devoured by the one who goes to and fro as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Brother Chumley, I made my mind up. I'm not going to allow him to devour me. When trouble comes, I'm going to stand like Daniel did in the lion's den. Number two, the second thing that's coming for God's people is deliverance from our troubles. I told you I like the positive. That wasn't a period there where I stopped reading in Psalms 34:19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He went right on speaking and said, But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I want to stand as a lighthouse in a world of darkness this morning and say, I don't care how bad it seems. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how down you are, how persecuted you are. God has promised to deliver you out of everything that comes against you. The devil may be beating your brains out. You may feel like you're going down for the last time you might not have enough strength to stand on your own but the word declares that God wants to deliver you and he will he's not a man that he should lie his hand is not shortened he is reaching out to those in need this morning and if you're going through trouble you just need to know that the answer is on the way God wants to deliver Ooh, it excites me it makes me feel good 
amen, even when I don't feel good. Right, when things are going wrong and it seems like my world's falling apart, I can stand knowing that this is just for a season. This is just for now. I look the devil in the eye sometimes and say, this too shall pass, Brother Danny. It doesn't matter how dark it gets. God is on the scene and he wants to deliver us. You say, oh, but you don't know how bad it is. You don't know how sick I am. You don't know what's going on in my family. You don't know what my finances are. But God will deliver them out of them all. Aren't you thankful that it didn't say God will deliver them out of some of them? Yeah. I've met many people in the church who take that mindset. Well, God delivers some people, but he doesn't deliver me. God works for some people, but he doesn't work for me. God does it for my brother, but he's never done it for me. Every time trouble comes, it just gets worse and worse and worse until I'm flat on my back and I don't have any way up and I just give up and I'm so depressed and I'm so upset and I'm so despondent, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. The trouble's coming. The trouble is here, but God's plan is to deliver you. I'm telling you what, he's never left me alone. He's never forsaken me. Every time I've called upon him, he has been there to deliver me. For God's people, deliverance is coming. You say, yeah, but what's going on in the Middle East? It doesn't matter because God's going to deliver us out of it all. Well, what's going on on Wall Street? It doesn't matter because God is going to deliver us out of it all. You've heard me say it before. I don't care if gas gets to $10 a gallon. God's going to make sure that we've got enough gas in the tank of our car to get to work and to get to church and do what we need to do. You know why? Because he's promised to deliver us. I'll tell you what. I had somebody tell me just over a year ago, well, in, in another six months, gas will be 7 or $8 a gallon. I said, I'm going to rebuke that. I said, I want gas down under $3 a gallon. Well, drive by quick trip. It's going on now. I never thought I'd be thankful for gas two ninety four. I remember getting it for seventy five cents and a dollar when I was a kid. You know what? Get it on down there. But you know what? Wherever we are and whatever's going on in our life, we need to know for a fact that deliverance is on the way. Deliverance is coming in our health and our finances and our relationships. If we are God's people, we can count on the fact that deliverance is coming. Number three, the third thing that's coming for God's people, joy. Amen. Who needs some joy? I preached a message a while back on our joy being full. I want my joy to be full. Amen. Psalms 30, 30 verse 5, I use this to prove to my children how much like God I am. Psalms 30 verse 5 says, His anger endureth but for a moment. I'm just like God. Because I'll tell you what, when I get angry, when I lose it, my wife will, ah, oh, I'm as good as any of you. When I lose it, I lose it. Our kids lose their phones. They're grounded till they're 40. I'm taking their Miss Me jeans back, and I'm taking them to yard sales and sending them to school in those clothes, and my anger is so furious and so big, and then in five minutes, I'm loving on them and hugging on them and giving their phones back, and Vanessa saying, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? I said, well, I'm like God. My anger endureth but for a moment. That verse goes on to say, in his favor is life. Yes, amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. How many of you have ever cried? How many of, how, how many of you have ever cried like David did till you can't cry no more? There's no tears left. You've cried yourself out and you can't cry anymore and you say it's darker than it's ever been. I'm sadder than I've ever been. It's worse than it's ever been. I don't see any way out of this. What you do, you plant your feet on the ground. You hold your head high. You square your shoulders back and say I might be weeping right now but as a child of God, joy is coming in the morning and it won't be long until your joy is full and things are changed. What we need is a joy revival. Amen. Yes. We'll sing that, Sister Debbie. Let's have a revival. Let's have a joy revival. Yes. Let's get everybody's joy meter yes. filled back up. Yes. Do you know why many people don't have joy? Because of their attitude. Yes. 
We live in a country where people are unthankful for the most part. Well, I don't have what they have. We look at prosperity on the level of these crazy movie stars and, and, and sports people. 20 million a year, 30 million a movie. And we think, well, all I got's this little bit. Do you know what? We're the most blessed yes, people amen. in the country. Amen. If we'd begin to look and say, thank God for a roof over my head. Thank God for a bed to sleep on. Thank God for a plate full of food three times a day. Thank God for a family that loves me. Thank God for a Savior who died for me. Thank God for a church family who stands with me. If we would begin to look at how blessed we truly are, we'd see the joy is coming. It would fill us up to overflowing where everybody who came in contact with us us, would be infected by that joy That's that right we've got. Thank you, Lord. But many times it's gloom and doom. It's You've heard me say my favorite cartoon was Droopy. Remember him? Remember what Droopy would say? I'm happy. No, you're not. If you're happy and you know it, tell your face. If you're happy, your face will show it. If you're happy, your attitude will show it. If you're happy, your life will show it. As God's people, if we want that joy that's coming, we've got to get our attitudes in check and start being thankful for what we've got. Thank you, Jesus. We went to the fair this week, and in going through the fair, we had Daisy and Copeland in the stroller. There was a man who had some fruit, and we were looking at their stand, and, and he gave Copeland a little apple about that big. And Copeland is one year old. He knows sign language, and he's learning how to talk. He got that apple, and his eyes got that big. He looked up at that man, and Vanessa said, what do you say to the nice man? He said, thank you, thank you. And I thought, boy, if we could be that thankful to God for all that he's done for us, thank you. But many times we're not like Copeland. We're like Daisy. <laughs> Daisy saw him get the apple, and she wanted something. So the man handed her an orange. She took the orange. And Vanessa said, what do you say to the nice man? She said, peel it. <laughs> Many times our joy is a fool because that's how we treat God. He's given us everything. He said, I spread a table before you in the presence of your enemy to prove that I'm your God and I'm your comforter and I'm your savior and I'm your redeemer. And we sit there at the table and refuse to eat. You know what I noticed? It's very peculiar about those verses. There's no high chairs at the table. There's none of those little spoons with rubber on the end. You need some healing gland. Oh, here comes the airplane. You need some prosperity. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. No, at that table, God expects us to eat for ourselves. He said, I put everything on that table you need. The joy is coming. The joy is on the table. Pick it up and eat it for yourself. Become an adult in the things of God. Joy is coming. Be thankful for what little you do have. And before long, God will put you on a brand new level. You'll get to places you never dreamed you'd get to before. When you show God, you can be content right here. Child of God, I'm telling you beyond the shadow of a doubt, joy is coming. Amen. Number four, the fourth thing that's coming for God's people, death is coming. It's, it struck our church. It's many times. With Amelia, we're praying for her, lifting her up. But we've got to live knowing that the word of God is true. Hebrews 9.27 says, It's appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. We live sometimes like we're never going to die. We're going to live forever. Men are especially bad about that. Steve was just like I am in that area. Louis Drapp was like that. I've known many men who think in their mind, they're going to live forever. Now, Brother Miller might, praise God. <laughs> He's made it a lot further than some of us are going to make it. But we've got to live for God knowing that we have an enemy called death. And even though that enemy was defeated at the cross, it was defeated when Christ came out of the tomb, if the Lord tarries, everyone in this room is going to leave this world in death. 
a hundred years from today. Let me look around. There's maybe one of us. Not you, Brother Thulin, the one you're holding. <laughs> that baby might be here a hundred years from today. But if the Lord tarries 100 years, every one of us in this room are going to be dead. But do you know what? We don't have to fear it. We don't have to dread it. We have to look at this life and know that it is a temporary thing. This body is a temporary dwelling. When Steve laid there in that casket and I looked at him, Amelia, I thought, that's not Steve. That is the shell that housed Steve. Steve is somewhere playing before the Lord right now with King David. He went out. He met his appointment. Brother Lewis met his appointment. I'm going to meet my appointment. There's no guarantee that every one of us are going to be back here for church tonight. We don't know what's going to happen. Child of God, I'm telling you this to wake you up and make you realize, get ready because death is coming for every one of us. What's that mean? Live your life every day like it's the last. Well, you talk about living for Jesus. I'm talking about loving your family. I'm talking about how hard you work on your job. I'm talking about how you treat your neighbor. I'm talking about doing what the Word of God demands and commands us to do, following His commandments and statutes. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. I want to be as good to everybody today as I can possibly be because it might be my last day with them. Death is an enemy. It's going to take every one of us. But if we know that we know that we know that we're washed in the blood, that Jesus is our Savior, that God has a plan, we can leave this world knowing that when the door opens on the other side, it's paradise, it's eternity, it's forevermore. It's not something that we have to be discouraged about and down about. It is simply one chapter closing and another chapter opening up. Number five, the fifth thing that's coming for God's people. Jesus. Yes. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We sing, troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear. Now's that ache. Humbling your heart to God. Saves from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod. Christians awake. It's time for us to wake up and realize Jesus is coming soon. It's not just a song. It's reality. Jesus is coming back for the church. When is he coming? You're not going to get me. You're not going to get me to predict it. I may be a ding-dong in very many areas of my life, but I'm not about to stand and predict when Jesus is coming back. Amen. I'm not going to write you a book that says 2014 reasons he's coming back in 2014. <laughs> it doesn't work. Right. You know what? We as God's people need to be very careful with our mouths and what we say. Because the Bible says if we declare anything and say, Thus saith the Lord, and it comes not to pass, we're a false prophet, and people are to have no confidence in us. People are not to fear us. People are not to look at us at the oracle of, as the oracle of God. What we need to say is Jesus is coming soon. Negative people say, oh, I've been hearing that for 50 years. You may hear it 50 more. Amen. A million years to God is like a, 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 a second. Praise God. A million years to us is like a second to God. It could be 10,000 years from now. It could be before we pray to close this service today. I want you to know Jesus is coming soon. In Acts, the second chapter, verse 10, those apostles were standing, looking steadfastly as Jesus went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And they said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. Aren't you thankful it's not a different Jesus? Aren't you thankful it's not some denominational Jesus? Amen. It's that same Jesus that went up. What they say? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. 
But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, Woo! With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. I'm here to comfort you this morning and say no matter what it looks like, no matter how bad it is, Jesus is coming back to get us. Get ready and be watching. I'm watching for him. I had a preacher ask me, what would you do differently if you knew for a fact Jesus was coming back in the morning? I said, I wouldn't do anything different. I'd keep living the way I'm living. I'd keep preaching the way I'm preaching. I'd keep doing the things I'm doing. Because Jesus is coming back. He's coming for us, church. I'd taken the kids. We'd taken the kids to the cemetery a while back to my grandmother's grave, their great-grandmother that most of our children never met. She died before most of them were born. And the kids got to running. They weren't interested in looking at the headstone. They were running and looking at the flowers and the bumblebees and the birds. And, and I said, come on, let's go. We need to go. And they just kept running and playing. I said, come on now, let's go. We need to get home. It's going to get dark. Let's go. They just kept running and playing. I told Vanessa, get in the car. <laughs> she said, what are you doing? I said, get in the car. She got in the car and I drove out of that cemetery <laughs> around the block. She said, those kids are probably chasing this car, losing their minds. I drove all the way around the block of that big cemetery, South Heights Cemetery in Sepulpa, and pulled back around, and they were standing right where we left them. I said, get in the car. They started to get in the car, and they sat in their seats. I said, weren't you scared? Noah said, I knew you wouldn't leave us here with all these dead people, Dad. <laughs> I knew you'd come back to get us. Do you know what? I feel the same way. When I think about my Savior, when I think about my God, I say, God, I know you're not going to leave me down here with all these dead people. When the trumpet sounds and the Lord shouts, we're out of here. We're going home. He's got a plan. Church Jesus is coming back. Comfort one another with these words. Know in your heart this isn't the end of it. This isn't the end. Jesus is coming back. Amen. He won't leave us here with all these dead people. We're getting out of here. Oh, and all those that we've lost. Those of you that lost loved ones 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, we're going to be reunited with them. Those of us who lost loved ones two weeks ago, we're going to be reunited with them. Why? Because we have a hope that the world doesn't have. And that hope is that for God's people, Jesus is coming. Praise God. Bow your heads with us if you would.